Would y'all be mad if the Spark and Zero opening was another version of Chala, Hey Chala? This is atrocious. We are less than nine days away from early access of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. That's if you're getting early access. 13 days if you ain't getting early access. You know, you wanna see reviews, you wanna wait. I understand y'all, I resonate with that. But we have a problem. There's a lot of people on YouTube, TikTok, all these other social media places telling people how to prepare for Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. And they all start off like this. So I'm um, number one, you're gonna have to go play uh, Budokai Tenkaiji 1, 2, and 3. Or they also sound like this. I think Raging Blast, actually, I think Raging Blast 2 is more akin to Sparking Zero than Budokai Tenkaiji ever will be. Now, number one, there's a lot of truth and validity to those statements. However, y'all forgetting the problem. What about the people that can't play Budokai Tenkaiji 1 through 3 right now? or play Raging Blast 1 or 2. I mean, think about it. Everybody don't have access to emulation machines or even have a PS2 just laying around or a PS3. The PS3 at this point is like 14 years old, my guy. 14, it came out in 2006. And if I'm not mistaken, the PS2 came out in 2001. And not everybody that got Spark and Zero got the money to buy those consoles or systems. And don't get me started. I hate this. I hate talking about something of these prices for Budokai Tenkaiji 1 through 3. So I'm going to teach you guys today how to fully prepare for Dragon Ball Spark and Zero in game theory. See, if you guys don't know who I am, I am Avatar Yaya. I've been around the anime game community and been playing anime games since birth. I've also competed and won money in Dragon Ball Xenoverse and Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. I don't think I'm broken or anything like that. But I got a little brain, okay? I, I could cook a little bit, all right? I ain't, I ain't the best, but I'm up there <laughs> a little bit, you know? I have that. <laughs> Another thing, I don't wanna push emulation on this channel because I don't wanna sit there and be liable for people's PCs and stuff like that. So I'm not pushing that at all or ever right now, at least. Story time. Somebody told me that they bricked a PC trying to download Dolphin. It wasn't even a virus. He just started clicking shit and it broke. Damn, bro, it's already packaged. How you mess it up? I just don't believe that. Therefore, I'm not gonna be doing all of the Budokai games versus Raging Blast games because if you have access to those, play them. <laughs> what I will do is I'm gonna shout out a creator, Grandmaster Hawk, and a few other players and content creators such as, um, I'm gonna call him DD because I ain't saying his name. But let's talk about it. What about some games that help you get prepared that you probably already own at home or may have played or have access to within PS4, PS5, Xbox, Xbox Series X, and even PC. Number one, let's talk about movement. This game came out last year and arguably one of my favorite games I've ever played from From Software. We gotta talk about that get out armor core six. Now, one thing that's very similar with Sparking Zero that I think no other game does as well yet, maybe other mecha games that I may not mention in this video, the movement is very similar, especially when you're dashing in and out to Armor Core 6. That is one of the best things about Sparking Zero, in my honest opinion, the movement. If I can't move, the game is ass. Heck, it's one of my criticisms, even though I love the game, a big problem with Jujutsu Kaisen Curse Clash. I love you, Miwa, you're so fun. I'm still playing. If y'all wanna play that game with me, I don't care. Forget what everybody else said on Twitter. We gonna have fun ourselves. Armor Core 6, they have PVP mode, so you can put yourself in that mental state of like, all right, this might be how crazy or cracked Tenkaiji rank can be, especially when people learn how to move and hit people in that game. So Armor Core 6 for me is a high recommendation if you really wanna get in the mindset of preparing. Now, mind you, they're a whole different type of game, by the way, so don't take that 100% here. A lot of y'all gonna take that too crazy to the grain and be like, why he used this for that? The, the, the point of the video, y'all didn't, y'all don't be watching content, y'all. Y'all y'all know what y'all be doing, bro. So let's get the elephant out the room. Everybody has been making memes. If you've been following TikTok, Twitch, or other platforms, people have been roasting the Xenoverse players playing this game. And for one, I think they're hilarious, but I do think they can cook. And let's break it down. Xenoverse 2 players have had some of the craziest, closest mechanics to try to emulate Tenkaiji and its control scheme a little bit. I honestly feel like if you're coming from Xenoverse 2, you might want to try the new control scheme 
unless you just want to hang with the big dogs and play the standard control you know what i'm saying to be honest both control schemes are pretty good don't don't tweak we're not gonna make this a modern versus classic situation like street fighter 6 okay we're not doing it. the problem with xenoverse prep is that xenoverse doesn't inherently play very similar to tenkai eg and it's gameplay i feel like out of most dragon ball games with pvp to get in the mindset or the zone of tenkaiji spark and zero in general xenoverse might be the worst one however to be on the xenoverse player side y'all do have a skill tree that works very similar to spark and zero right now and it's funny because when xenoverse 2 came out i came to the realization that i didn't like it because it tried to play off of like the tenkaiji and rage and blast games but make it its own thing with the Xenoverse gameplay structure. But I believe the Xenoverse players, they gonna be cooking. Watch, y'all been roasting them. They gonna be the ones beating y'all ass because they've been playing a Dragon Ball game and they understand BS for the last six to eight years of that game. <laughs> it's almost going on a decade of successful Xenoverse 2. Next thing, meter management. Now, I think you could play multiple games to get used to meter management. And this is where I put my biasness here. I think if you have a copy of Naruto Storm, Storm 4, connections or something else around that this could help you a lot naruto storm as a game may be just a typical arena fighter but the amount of chakra you have matters a lot to do things in that game no chakra you lose out on a lot of options and you could be in bad disadvantage states in a lot of scenarios especially on defense you know in sparking zero that key almost consumes everything unless you're broken like weiss and doing this shit I'm gonna be honest with y'all. If y'all want me to make a video about Whis, I actually don't think Whis is that good. Like, his moves might suck or one like that. In Xenoverse, Whis wasn't really cracked either, but he has some god property with not the lack of meter. But, like, there's obviously better moves other characters may have, even if he has that auto dodge infinite BS people are going crazy about. Like, I don't know. We'll see. I could be wrong. I'll hold that. But let me know if y'all want to see that. Hit the like button. So, here's another thing. This is why I said early in the video, I wasn't gonna bring up Raging Blast, but I'ma tell y'all, stop playing that I'ma explain why. See, there's a thing with fighting games that a lot of people like to go back for nostalgic reasons and play the older one. It happened to me, it happens to other people. Raging Blast 2, I have to give credit to it. It's gameplay has some really cool things in it, but Sparkin doesn't have it. I'm not saying Raging Blast 2 is better than Sparkin. I'm saying I don't want y'all to get stuck in a trap where like y'all love the old game, y'all been grinding it out. Then you play the new one and it doesn't have something in there. And then y'all go on Twitter, social media, TikTok, whatever you may need and say the game is garbage. We don't need that. Come on, I've done it before too. I understand. Like I've done it with Guilty Gear X Zerd. I've done it in the past with Guilty Gear Axon Core. I'm not even good at it, but that game's fun as hell to play. And then Strive, I didn't like it early on because I knew what I liked about the old game and the new game didn't have any remotely resemblance of it. I just was like, hey, that's not for me. So I don't roast the game like that. It just be funny doing it with friends, but I don't do it publicly 24 seven like half a fighting game anime Twitter does. I think the closest thing you will get out of Rage and Blast is like how menus work. Like the way you kind of switch and transform is very similar in my head to Raging Blast and Sparking Zero. So me, I personally will never ever recommend Raging Blast 2 practice right now. I see a lot of people doing this. It can help you get used to doing strings and comboing and stuff like that. But other than that, I personally don't recommend it because I don't want people to get hurt by playing or becoming this. Old game good, new game bad. We ain't doing that this time around, okay? Now for two games I personally suggest and some of my favorite anime arena fighters to ever exist, I'm gonna give credit to My Heroes 1 Justice 2 and Kill I Kill If. What both of these games do is it feels very similar to Arena Fighter 2nd and fighting game as well. So being able to get your hits off on people because people are gonna be moving around a lot and stuff like that is very important in Tenkaiji. Mastering movement and understanding the concept of hit confirming people in Arena Fighter could help you get further than the next player. Getting used to hitting people and then learn how to keep the combo going is very important in this type of game. So that's why I recommend those two games. I just don't wanna go into deeper detail, but it could be whatever, you know? Now, here's the thing. This next part of the video, a lot of y'all gonna click off. A lot of y'all gonna be mad if I say this. I actually said it when I did my Evo review and a lot of y'all took it to heart. A lot of y'all, I wasn't even slander. I was saying it was better that they took those animations 
and repurpose them. Being honest, the best game to play to get ready for this game in Jump Force. I know, I know. I didn't believe it either till I played it. Reason why is because the game has a lot of similar animations. And back then, I was really mad about Jump Force. I hate that game. People, if you tell me you like that game, like, I'm sorry, like, I'm saying this on camera right now. Like, you have a bad taste in video games. Don't buy another anime game. Actually, sell your PS5. Give me your PS5 Pro money. And hit the subscribe button, because you should be shamed for, like, even saying that's a good game or a misunderstood game. That just pissed me off. I'm walking away. But a big thing about the game is that a lot of mechanics seem like they've taken the assets of Jump Force, which I think is a perfectly fine thing, repurposed them, and made a million dollar product from it. Power Smash is a thing that was always a Tenkaiji thing first, but if you play Jump Force, you know how similar that is in that game to the T. And to be honest, Jump Force is Spike's latest game beforehand. I forgot the exact name of the moves, but like the low sweeps or low attacks that like crush guards or crush stuff like that. Ooh, that is also a Tenkaiji thing that was in Jump Force. Now again, the problem with me saying play Jump Force is that the speed of the game and the animations are ugly and dog shit, so I wouldn't ever recommend it. But if you want to see what Spike did before, how we got to this now, go ahead and download Jump Force. Now, I forgot to talk about this, but the big problem with all the other arena fighters I may have mentioned, outside of Jump Force a little bit in My Hero, is that a lot of them are just simply grounded. They're not airborne or don't have flight mechanics to them or you're fighting in the air. Reason why my hero is fine is because you do fight in the air a little bit and jump force you fight in the air for a couple seconds most of the time too. But then again, none of these truly play like Tenkai EG or I'm not gonna say that they don't have the depth of it. People don't give these games a chance. A lot of arena fighters do have some very crazy depth to them. But you know, people disregard them because it's not Dragon Ball or it's either they look uglier than Sparking Zero, which is understandable. I understand, I read your comments. Y'all will buy something for graphics alone. I get it. I understand that I'm like that too. If it look pretty, take my money. Bandai, you can have my money. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna stop. Now again, in this video, I could be saying a lot wrong, but the point of this video is to get y'all into the game theory and get prepared for arena fighters. Arena fighters are probably not the most competitive game in the genre or not the most well received balance wise but I want y'all to be prepared for the BS that may come at you in this game. And if you don't have a PS2 or any way to run these games through emulation, which I don't want to promote in this video again, you will be out of luck compared to people that's been playing Raging Blast 2 for the past year and a half, or Budokai Tick IG3 players. But I want to give y'all hope, and that was the point of this video. So if y'all enjoyed today's video, make sure y'all hit the like button. I'm sweating because there's so many lights on me right now. And remember, you got tell no, comment down below. Pick three characters. Who do the three characters you want to main in Spark and Zero? Tell me that. And if this video helped you or gave you insight on what to play or what to do until you wait for these next 14 or 13 days, hit the like button, subscribe. It's your boy Avatar Yaya. You guys are golden. And that is raw. Squala, peace. And I'm out. Henshin. I ain't got shit for that, but Squala holla.